when there was 45 sheep missing, like in the lambs and everything, and the sheep just count, just count out the nice bit of money, like. Does this seem familiar? It's hard enough trying to take part in a conversation with native speakers, let alone understanding. Today, we're going to break down a vital part of any conversation, asking questions. Hi, I'm Bernadette, and welcome back to another Dynamic English video. If question words, types, and word order are giving you a headache, then look no further. Today, we'll be looking at common mistakes, question words and phrases, as well as how to use auxiliary verbs. We'll be showing you an easy way to remember the general question structure. So, keep watching to make your next conversation with a native speaker a lot smoother. Every question in the English language begins with either a question word, question phrase, or auxiliary verb. I'm sure you're already thinking of some, such as who, what, when, where, why, how, or which. Or you may be thinking of some question phrases, such as how much, how many, or how often. Now, this is a great start to the majority of questions, but what comes next? I think we should consider using an auxiliary verb, sometimes known as a helping verb. Auxiliary verbs such as be, do, or have. In part one, we'll be covering just the core auxiliary verbs. If you need help with modal auxiliary verbs, then look out for part two. Now that we've covered the basic foundation of a question, let's look at the amazing structure you can use to form nearly any type of question. The most common mistake we see is in the word order of questions especially when the subject and verb are the wrong way around. Or if the auxiliary verb is missing. Why likes he soccer versus why does he like soccer? The verb to be is also a problem. Usually the word order is incorrect. Let's take a look. It's sunny today versus is it sunny today? So how can we fix these problems? Here is an easy grammar structure that you can use for nearly every question. 1. The question word or phrase. 2. The auxiliary verb. 3. The subject. And 4. The main verb. Why don't we check out some examples? Where do you live? How is your grandmother feeling? How long have you been working here? See? It's that easy. But what about when we need to start a question with an auxiliary verb? Well, all you need to do is remove step one. For example, do you work in the USA? Is she enjoying the meal? Have you seen this movie before? This type of question is also correct. You don't always need a question word or question phrase. Another common mistake we see is in the conjugation of both verbs in a question, when really it should only be the auxiliary verb. Does he likes it? Versus, does he like it? Where does Tom like to eat? Versus, where does Tom like to eat? Looking at some different question types might help to explain these differences. In English, you'll encounter two question types open and closed. Let's start by building on from our last point of starting a question with an auxiliary verb. Closed questions will always start with an auxiliary verb and the answer is usually short and sweet. Yes or no. Do you like the house? Yes, I do. Is the supermarket open at 7pm? Yes, it is. Have they visited this museum before? No, they haven't. Did you notice here how the answer directly responds to information in the question? Patterns are very common in English, especially between questions and answers. Another common mistake to note with auxiliary verbs is with the verb to be. This verb does not need an auxiliary verb. For example, do you tired versus are you tired? On the other hand, Open questions will always start with a question word or phrase, and the answer requires more detail. For example, how long did you spend in Europe? 
Where did she buy that dress? Who is your favourite actor? Notice how the question structure we used before is still the same. Now, it's no use sounding like a robot. So it's important that we pay close attention to the intonation of our questions. It's common that with closed questions, our intonation at the end will go up. But with open questions, it is the opposite. On the final word, the intonation will go down. <laughs> Do you like this restaurant? Versus, excuse me, where is the restaurant? Another detail to pay close attention to when forming questions is that your subject and auxiliary verb match. The main verb in your question will stay the same, but your auxiliary verb will need to change depending on the subject and tense. Do you like to cook? Versus, does he like to cook? Have they visited Germany before? Versus, has she visited Germany before? And finally, as in every language, speaking becomes faster. So some words might get dropped. Do you want to visit the park? Might become, want to visit the park? The important thing to note is to pay attention to the intonation or key words in a question if you're unsure. Thank you for watching today's video. If you want to further improve your knowledge on question types, question words, or structure, then look for part two of this video series. If you want to keep up with dynamic English content, then make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. The bell icon! <laughs> then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to make sure you're notified when we post a new video. Also, follow us on Instagram at Dynamic English, and you can also check out our website. We have over 70 native teachers based in Santiago, Chile, at www.dynamicenglish.cl. Thanks for watching.